Hi, my name is Karen. I'm with CK Customs PA. I'm also an admin on the Facebook group Cricut Help Desk Unofficial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to be more efficient when setting up your Cricut cutting mat with multiple pieces of vinyl on the same mat, much like I did in this picture here. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and take you into Cricut Design Space, where I have a design with multiple colors. I've already assigned the colors, put groupings together that are going to be attached to keep them aligned to themselves. So we have our eat sleep together as one piece. I have my bubbles there together as a lighter blue. I have a little bit darker blue for the splash and kind of a yellowish gold fish. Don't forget those hearts at the top. All right. Let's click make it and it has now put my project onto multiple mats, one mat per color. I don't like to babysit my machine. I'd rather set it all up so that it is one mat to cut through or as few as possible. I think in this case we will be successful with one. So if you're going to make this for a shirt or something where you're going to press HTV, make sure you click mirror so that it's in reverse. Now we need to move all the pieces onto a single mat or again as few mats as possible. I'm going to go ahead and go to my second mat, click on the three dots at the top left corner of the fish, move object, and I'm going to tell it to go to my first mat which was the red one. Click confirm. It's now on my red mat. It came through with that mirror so it did flip it. I'm going to move it to the other side. I'm going to go to my mat three for the eat sleep. Go through the same process with the three dots. Move object. Back to the red mat. Confirm. Brought it to my red mat. Mirrored it. And I'm going to go ahead and move that somewhere else on the mat. Continuing down, I go to mat four. Select the dots. Move object. Bring it to mat one which is the red one, confirm, and then go to your last mat on the left, click the dots, move object, again selecting the red mat and confirm. So at this point, everything I have is on a single mat right at the top. Again, it's mirrored, don't forget that. And now we need to arrange it so that we can get our vinyl onto a single mat. Now around here, it's a little tight for my comfort. This dot is coming under the T. So sometimes you may need to get creative in lining things up, especially if you have a pretty full mat going on. So let's go ahead and drop the eat sleep to the lower corner. I think, you know, he's a pretty solid guy by himself. We'll just get him out of the way. I think what we'll do is we're going to make this fish go vertically instead of horizontal. It's just for the purposes of cutting. Once you pull it off your mat and weed it in the end, it's all the same. If you notice, as I clicked him, we have the rotate button. If I hold that and drag, I can move him to wherever I believe he'll fit best. And let's put him in that top corner again. Now we have our bubbles and then we have these splashes. Now it's still a little tight here on the splashes. I could probably make it work, but let's make it easier for ourselves. Let's bring that one vertical as well and drop that to the bottom corner. All right, now you need to find your vinyl pieces and get them the right sizes. So I use these grid patterns to really figure out how much vinyl I need and where to place it on the mat. So for the heart, for instance, it looks like I need to be generous two inches by two inches. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my vinyl scraps. I have a ton of them. Find a piece of red. Here's a piece of red here. I'm going to go ahead and cut off um, two inches by two inches. Now I'm going to eyeball that one. I have lots of space around it on the mat to be okay with it. But if not, I always have a ruler handy. So I got two inches by a generous two inches. I like to say it's probably about two and a half on that one. So. With that piece, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my mat. Let me pull my carrier off. Sorry, that was loud. Let me pull my carrier off. 
take my red piece of vinyl, shiny side down to that top corner. Go ahead and place it on your mat. Now what you're doing here is again, looking at these grid lines. So I've gone over the two and I've gone under the two. So I made sure that entire area is going to be covered just like it is. We've got the two inch and the two inch fully covered. Lots of extra space there. All right, let's go ahead to do our fish. Now, if we look at our fish on the side, let me move that over so we can see some more of our grid lines. If we look at our fish, we need it to make sure to come to about the 10 and a quarter mark. Now I'm going to be generous. So anywhere between 10 and a half down to the nine inch mark. So if we count from backwards down from 12, we have one inch, two inch, it needs to be at three inches wide. And then if you look at the fin of the tail here and you come all the way to the left side of your grid, you're going to be at a six and a half mark. So three inches wide, six and a half. All right, I come back into my scraps, looking for that kind of goldish yellow or whatever color you feel would work best for your design. All right, so I found this one. I'm gonna go ahead and measure it and let's flip to the matte screen. You can see a little more that way. So make sure I have my three inches. I have four and make sure I have at least six and a half. Looks like I have about seven. I'm gonna go ahead and use this piece for now. We may have to modify it later. So let's go ahead and get that one laid onto our mat. Now remember that one was coming from this top corner on our screen. And the went um, shiny side down. Now I can also see here on my mat that it's coming to just about the 12. So if we go back and look in design space, we see Let's see where the 12 is. So the 12 is way down here. So we've got plenty of extra to the point that we're probably going to need to trim it up a bit um, so that our eat can fit. So I could take it back off and cut it very easily. Um, I'm just going to kind of lift up the corner and cut it right on the mat. So what you need to do is when you're looking in design space, see what your lever, your leeway is. I'm sorry. So I need it to be about between the 15 and the 14. So pretty much at that 14 on your mat. So if I come here, here's the 14. That's where I know to make sure to cut it. Alrighty, that piece is good to go. We go back to our screen and we pretty much repeat this process to get all of the pieces accounted for. So for the bubbles, we wanted to do that in a lighter blue. It looks like it's between the three and the four. That's where we made sure it lined up between the three and the four, all the way out to the six. So I need one inch by six inches. I'm gonna hop into my scraps here and find a color that I feel would look good. All right, got that light blue there. I'm gonna use my, my ruler here. And you know what, I won't skinny it up because I have plenty of room on both sides. Um, but I will cut it down to these six. I may not even have to do that, to be honest. I may not have to cut it down. Um, and the reason I'm not cutting them down, so I would cut them down to keep my scraps and all of that. Um, I'm not worried about cutting them down because I'm probably not going to actually cut this design. I'm just using it for a demonstration for you. Um, so I am going to leave my piece as whole as possible. But if I were really making this one, I would cut off at the six inch because that would still be a nice piece that I would keep. I hope that makes sense. So let's go back to our table. Remember we need it to be between the three and the four and cover up to the six. So back on the table, oops, there we go. Shiny side down, make sure the three and the four are covered. I'm gonna scooch it close to my red here. I don't wanna go too low because I have other pieces I know that are gonna be coming. Alrighty, now it does um, go over my white piece here. So again, you're gonna to wanna to cut yours down to the six. Just slice that off, put that away for another project. I'm gonna leave it, like I said, this is just for demonstration purposes, okay? It's not gonna hurt anything for me right here. All right, I know we have another piece of blue coming up. Let's look back at our screen. We got this fun splash, covers about two inches. 
And then also up to probably about the five and a half, really, you know, counting backwards. So the 12, um, 11, 10, 9, it's probably about five and a half inches. You can always do a generous six. So let me find another piece of blue that's kind of in the darker blue shade. Alrighty, how about this piece? So, definitely have my two inches. Um, you can cut that and save it. Uh, and then, I don't know, it'd be iffy if I got a uh, five and a half on this. Let's see. Use my handy dandy ruler. Oh, I got six and a quarter. I am good, guys. So, I'm going to take this from the bottom corner onto my mat. Shiny side down. Push that down nicely. Make sure there's no air bubbles. Let's come and get that last piece for the corner of the mat back on the screen. We need to do the eat sleep. Now, we were going to do that in green. Um, and size-wise, we can count the grid lines. So from the bottom, we have one, two, three, four, five. From the far side, from the right we have one, two, three, four, five, six and a quarter. So we'll say at least six and a half. So five by six and a half in green. Let's see what we can find for that. Let's see if I have five on this piece here. I use this for my scraps and it works fantastic. They're all sorted by color and it is great. So this one is not quite five. Let me see if I have a larger scrap of green. I do have this larger one, um, but again, since I'm just demonstrating, I don't really want to cut it down. Um, so I'm gonna use this piece. We're just gonna pretend like it's the right size for this project. It's okay. Let's go back to the table and line that up from the bottom corner, just the way we done before. And if you cut it down to the six and a half, you won't have this overlap here. Um, even if your overlap, it doesn't matter. So we know like that splash only came two inches out and hopefully you cut that blue down to save some of it. Um, so this would have sat down just fine. Um, even though the design isn't that long and this design isn't that long and this overlap isn't going to be affected or cut, you don't want to leave it this way to go into your cutter. Um, it could get caught as the blade is moving along and kind of pull it up um, and trip up your design. So don't leave those when you're going to cut. But otherwise, generally speaking, this is how your mat is going to look when you want to put multiple colors on a single mat. So you don't have to prepare that many different mats. What would this have been? Five different colors here. So five different mats, have them ready to go, um, feed them in and out. You know, this little red guy, he's gonna cut quick. So this would be a set it and forget it. At this point, you'd be ready to go. You'd come back into here, you'd click continue, and let me know if my Cricut is on, it is. You click continue, pick your material the way you always do, and it's gonna cut through that full design for you. So this would have been everyday iron on. All right, I hope that you found this helpful. If you did, please like my video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Happy crafting.